Perhaps the biggest use case for Tier 69 is managing a CPE's firmware, allowing service providers to remotely upgrade their install base without needing to send the firmware to the customer or send an engineer. Tier 69 has several mechanisms for doing this. The first is using the download RPC to directly download firmware. Optional RPCs that extend this capability include request download and schedule download. There's also a newer firmware bank mechanism in Tier 69 Amendment 6. We'll focus on using the download RPC here and go into more detail in other sessions. While the download RPC is used to transfer several different kinds of files to the CPE, when transferring firmware, it defines an entire process for completing the upgrade and conveying it to the ACS. This is due to the fact that a successful call of the RPC includes both downloading the file in question and applying it. The download RPC takes 13 arguments. The first is our familiar command key. Second is the file type argument, which is an enumeration indicating the purpose of the file download. This has a value from 1 to 5, including firmware upgrade image, web content, vendor configuration file, tone file, and ringer file. Values 4 and 5 are specific to the voice service function of a CPE specified in TR-104. Vendor configuration file also has its own criteria for being added to the CPE, so we'll focus here on firmware upgrade image. The next argument is the URL. While this must at a minimum support HTTP and HTTPS transports, other transports such as FTP may be supported. The next two arguments are the username and password, if they are required, to access the file specified at the URL. Next is file size, which is used to allow the CPE to predict whether it will have enough space for the file. If it is set to zero by the ACS, the CPE must proceed with the download anyway and assume it has enough space, though it may fail and specify this as a failure reason. The next is target file name. This is used if the ACS wants to specify the name of the file as it is written to the CPE's memory. The delay seconds argument behaves differently for different kinds of downloads. For unicast downloads, this specifies the number of seconds the CPE should wait before initiating a download. This is used by the ACS to help control the time at which the CPE upgrades its firmware. For multicast downloads, however, the CPE must begin the download immediately, and this number represents the total time the CPE has to initiate, download, and apply the firmware. If it can't complete the download within this window, it must consider the download to be a failure. Finally, there are two arguments, success URL and failure URL, that are meant to redirect the end user's browser if the upgrade was requested via the CPE's interface. This is one of the few instances that an end user is interacting specifically with a Tier 69 mechanism. These should be left empty if they are not in use. The download response contains three arguments. The first is status, just like in set parameter values. Status in this case is used as one of the mechanisms to indicate a successful upgrade. The second and third arguments are start time and complete time, which indicate the window in which the download was performed and completed, though these should only exist if the download completes within the session. Otherwise, it should be set to unknown. In the case of firmware, the CPE must consider the download complete when it has been downloaded and the upgrade is complete. There are three ways a CPE can indicate this. The first is to set status to zero in the download response. This is probably unlikely, as it means the download was completed and the firmware upgrade was committed and applied during the CWMP session, which is probably not possible in the event of a reboot. The second method is to set status to 1 in the download response and make a transfer complete call on the ACS during the same session. This is also unlikely for the same reasons, but possible. The third and most common way is to set status equal to 1 in the download response, and then call the transfer complete RPC in a new session. This is indicated in the inform RPC of the new session by including the 7 transfer complete event to tell the ACS that the CPE intends to make the transfer complete call during the session, and the M download event to tell the ACS that this is because the download RPC was called earlier. Since this new session is expected to have been initiated after the upgrade completes or fails, if the upgrade was successful, the version information in the inform arguments must reflect the upgraded version of the firmware in this new session. Once the session is established, the CPE makes the transfer complete call on the ACS. It contains four arguments. First is command key, which should be set to the command key value that was passed to the CPE during the download RPC. Second is fault struct. If the transfer was successful, this is set to zero. 
Otherwise, it contains a fault struct, which contains the appropriate fault code and a fault string with additional information. Lastly are our familiar start and complete times, which now have appropriate values.